Acts, the second chapter. Brother Ronnie, if I could get you guys to help me. I need two of you, you and someone else. This is a, a, what I would consider is minimum as a vision Sunday as you can have. Is in other words, a lot of times when you have a vision Sunday, you're looking toward doing a lot of things. There's one thing that I want to get done here. And this card, I want you to take it and uh, hang on to it. Think about it, pray about it. But it says, my family and I pledge to help my church with the vision of reflooring the fellowship hall, classrooms, and hallway. Monthly pledge for six months, one-time pledge of your name. And note this, guys. Uh, I know I'm asking for your name and address here, but you're not going to be called. It's a good faith pledge. You know, uh, we're not going to hound nobody. But, uh, and you've got six months to finish it, whatever it is that you want to do. But I need a budget. I need to s decide, okay, how much can we put on our flooring in the back? If you know the carpet's falling apart, uh, somebody spilled something a hundred times. You know, which is going to happen because it's fellowship hall. This is not a, this is not a palace. It's a, this is more of a barn. I mean that in a great way. It's a stable. It's a place where the scripture said, when I know ox in the stall, there's no fruitfulness. There's no economy. But where there, there, there's an oxen, there's great um, uh, manure. <laughs> which speaks of, I remember the first time when I came to, to Houston. I drove over to Pasadena and I went, whoa, what's that smell? And somebody said, well, that's, you're in Stinkadena. And I went, what? And they said, yeah. I said, what is that smell? And they said, it smells like money. <laughs> and if you're a farmer and you got smell like money, amen. In church, when you got people and you see stains on the floor, well, that's not a bad thing. Amen. That means we got folk here. Amen. It's not, a, it's not a, a mortuary, it's a sanctuary. So I want you to, uh, if you want one of these cards, you can take one, pray about it, turn it back in at the end of service or, or next week or whenever you want to. But I want as many as can. Listen, it's your house. It's up to you what you want to make of this house. There's another thing I need. I've been needing it for years and I don't say it a lot. But right outside this door here, there's a little grassy spot. Y'all see that little grassy spot? That needs an old... Stagecoach wagon or old tractor or something that speaks of the little country church. You hear what I'm saying? Something to put right there. Now, that's just, it just, it's begging for some landscaping and, and something that's screaming uh, pioneers, trailblazers. Can I get an amen? You see, see where I'm feeling here? So don't everybody show up with something at once. But give me a call. Let me know what we're going to put out there and how we're going to start decorating and doing some things around here. We need signs on doors. I see people walk in. They don't know where the restrooms are. They don't know where the fellowship hall is. So there's certain things we need to do because we're just used to it. But how about your guests when they come in? They look around and they go, they don't know where things are. So we want to make sure we get that done. Amen? So uh, just letting you know, it's Devin, huh? I'm not going to forget that. <laughs> Acts chapter 2. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Acts chapter 2. My, my, my. If the church grows, the kingdom expands. When the kingdom expands, people begin to enter heaven. It makes sense to me. I don't know why some people have a problem when wanting to see churches grow. It's my passion. It's uh, my desire. I had, a, I had a man tell me last, I did a funeral last Saturday, and I mentioned this. Wednesday night, I didn't tell you guys about it, but he's a big old guy, big old biker. And, and he told me in the back, he said, well, preacher, I, uh, I had a problem with the church. And I said, you did? And I said, and, and it was right after I got done, because he's telling me how, how much he enjoyed the message, how it affected him, how he wants to get involved and start coming to our church. That's good. But he said, I had a pastor. And he said, I had a friend, and, and he said he was a good fella, and I liked hearing him preach. But he said he... I was going through a divorce, and he's supposed to show up down at the court with me to stand with me. Instead, somebody died, and he went and did the funeral instead. And I thought to myself, well, that guy's already dead. He don't need you. I need you down here at the court. So I quit church. <laughs> People got excuses, don't they? 
All kind of excuses about stuff. So I looked at him, and here I don't know him, and you'd think I'm going to say something really nice, but I'm not going to at this moment. Because I said, sir, you just put your pastor between a rock and a hard place. There ain't no way he could win in that. Because you did it. And that's happened to me. I've had people want me to do, I've set people up to get a blessing in their life. And because I didn't show up to see the blessing, they quit the church. I'm just telling you, I helped the whole family get an adoption of kids. And then I didn't show up for the adoption because I couldn't. And they left the church and still hold it against me. And I'm thinking, are you serious? So don't put your pastor between a rock and a hard place. Matter of fact, don't put one another there. You know, at times you can do things and, you know, when you've got two churches growing like ours are, it, it's, it's, you try to get to everyone as you can. Now, uh, I need to go ahead and mention this to you before I get into this service. I was going to do something today. We're not going to. But as you know, and would, you, would you put that, do you have a, can you put that picture up before I get started? Do you remember this man, church? He was your doorman for over six years in this house. He greeted you at the door. He passed away Thursday night. So our condolences to Sister Debbie. Uh, there is a, 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 you know, we're doing something for them, but they, they didn't really want a funeral. So I'm, I'm just going to mention to you, when you see her, you hug her and love her. But let me just walk this out just a little bit more. If you're a widow in this house, would you stand? I was thinking to myself, I was thinking to myself, I love your husband, love your husband. I remember your man, he's not here. <laughs> love your husband, yours, ma'am, listen to me. I was thinking on my way here, www.net. Widows with wisdom, dot net, a network that works. You guys all have a similar pain. <sighs> Miss Dolly, you got that? And, and it's the same way at the other campus. That's similar pain that you feel. But when I say .net, you need to be a network with one another to connect with one another because there are other widows in the house. But then I had this amazing... I'm on my way here and I think about Jesus on the cross. And on the cross, he looked down. You remember this statement? He said to John, he said, John, behold your mother. Son, behold your mom. Mom, behold your, uh, your, uh, your son. Remember that statement? And we always talked about Jesus releasing his mother. But what we forgot was Jesus' mother was a widow by that time. That Joseph was dead. And so she's not only just, he's not only absent, but she's, she's a widow. Who's going to take care of her? Now, I, I know the church is mandated to take care of. But Jesus did this family thing. He connected people with her. John, you're, you're going to take care of mama from now on. There's a need for you to see the people in this house to love them. One day, you stay married long enough, you will be a widow or a widower. It's going to happen. So you have to look at yourself and say, okay, now God, help me to connect as I move through life. you got such wisdom, such wisdom. All of you do. But stay in, stay in love with these ladies. Now, I didn't even ask the widowers to stand up. They'd punch me if I asked them. But I love you guys. And so when Sister Debbie comes in this house, she's not alone. She's among a network of people that have gone through struggles and troubles in life. Amen. So would you, would you give these ladies a hand right here? Such dignity. Thank you, ladies. Such dignity. It's what we need. Amen. To connect. And, it, and I love the scripture says that, that in the Old Testament, God sets the lonely in families. You know, when I got stuck with the family of God, it was my, it, he put the lonely in here. He puts people in the house, amen, so they can find a family. If you ain't found your family yet, reach out, look over to the dirt bag next to you and shake hands with them real quick. I mean, with the family member next to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to the family. Amen. Welcome to the family. What family's all about. Family's so important. That, that Facebook thing is such a phenomenon, isn't it? I only got about three or four birthday cards my whole life. And then all of a sudden, I'm on Facebook. And I, they, they, hundreds and hundreds. And I think, I don't even know these people. But they know y'all. And they're verse, And all of a sudden, it's, like a, it's a phenomenon. And if you don't say howdy back, maybe you get in trouble. I hope not. But uh, it's, it's crazy. Amen. Acts chapter 2. Are you comfortable? 
Everybody understand my heart right now towards Sister Debbie and her family. Uh, you were such a great family. You were a great church. When Robert had the heart attack last Monday, so, you know, he was after the heart attack. Uh, we tried to get the word out to other people, but many of you were in the hospital with them. You, you sat with them. You stayed with them. You loved them. And uh, he, was, he was worthy of it. Hey, Amen. He was a pastor's friend. And if I get an opportunity, I'll share a little bit more on it when, when the family's here. But they didn't want really a, a... But you needed to hear. You need to know that what you've done here matters there. We're going to build a wall somewhere in this church. We're go, there's going to be a, a, a board and it's going to say what they did here mattered there. And I'm going to ask you for a, a what size picture, Cheryl? Like a three by five picture of when they were born and when they passed. A, a member, partner, or connection in this church. In other words, don't throw somebody up there knowing, you know, Billy Bob that we don't know. Amen. Just because you feel sorry for them. But I want to know, if, were they a part of my life, this church's life? I want to put a wall up and say what they did here. Because we forget we move through life and we forget people that impacted our lives and changed our lives and poured into this house and, and blessed us. And you say, well, young, I'm young. I don't think about that. You will when you get my age. Amen. But I'm a year from 60. No way. You can't look this good and be a year from 60. Amen. Still got my vanity. Hello. Let's talk about the church real quick. The essentials of, of Christianity. First, it's founder. We sang, what a beautiful name. What a wonderful name it is. He's the living, resurrected Jesus. No other foundation of any other type of religion is there that can even compare to Christianity about Jesus. Amen. Being the, its founder. His goal was to change individuals' lives and bring regeneration within their hearts. He didn't come in the, and attack the nations. He came to individuals. And he figured, if I can affect John, it'll affect James. If I can affect James, it'll affect Andrew. If I can affect Andrew, it'll affect Peter. And he moved it on down the line. Understanding that individually, he, had cha he changes our lives. He turns things around in us. And he does something to our heart. He... <sighs> One of the first things you notice when you get born again, usually your, your mouth starts cleaning up. Right. Things you used to say, you don't say no more. Because your mouth is connected to your heart. And when God changes your heart, He changes your language. Amen. If I could get hold of your tongue and pull it out, your tongue is a dipstick to your heart. And I can tell if you're half full of oil or not. All I do is get hold of your tongue and yank it out. And all I got to do is listen to you a little while. I don't know if you're defeated or if you got victory. Amen. And Jesus wants you to have victory. His method was through salvation. It's not political. It's not educational or religious philosophy that affects a person from without. But an act of divine redemption made possible through the blood of Jesus, which affects every area of a believer's life. I don't understand always how it works. But I can tell you that when one repents of their sins and turns toward Jesus and asks Jesus into their lives, it begins to regenerate. Now, when I say to regenerate, it means to, it, it, it's a process. Some people clean up up quick some folk take a little time it all depends on your playmates your playground and your playthings. if your playmates your playground and your playthings don't change you don't change but if they change then you change amen you start it starts affecting your life and turning things around his means was through discipleship he uses committed consecrated dedicated believers to carry out his plan committed practitioners of the faith Learning. And we've been walking through that in January when we uh, said, God, help us to pray, help us to fast, help us to give. Now, we, we hit in February, and you know, personally, I've decided, God, I need to keep doing this because it's, it's made a good change in my life. Right. Amen. It's affected me. So I want to keep praying. I want to keep fasting. Can I mention what you told me, HD, about the Tuesday night thing? Okay. Uh, we, not, maybe not this week. We'll let you. Probably going to let you in a couple weeks, but we're going to have Tuesday night prayer meetings. And I'll let you know when it's going to happen, but HD wants to be over that. He said, Pastor, we just need to come in here and pray on Tuesday night. Whether you can get here or not, we want to be here and praying. So we're going to open that up some also as we move forward. Because it's a discipleship discipline for you. Even if you live in Pennsylvania. Amen. I would pray more if I lived in Pennsylvania, ma'am. I really would. <laughs> I really would. Acts chapter 2, when the church began, when the church exploded, when the church took off, the Bible says, then they had gladly received his word. Well, then they were baptized. Oh, that day, there were about 3,000 added. 
to the kingdom. 3,000 souls. And they continued in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all the, they that believed were together. And had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and, and parted them to all men, and as every man had need. And they continually breaking with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily as should be saved. Now, let me let me say something real quick to you. I've seen people take this passage and make it their. Uh, their uh, mantra, their, 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 their theme in life, communal living. Now, I, I want you to know that it didn't work. Eventually, it failed. But it was what started. It was the, the spark. It's, it was the genesis that started this whole thing of the church moving. And because you got to realize that you got lots of stuff. These people had maybe a, a change of clothes, a little bit of fish. They didn't have a lot. But when it came together, they just wanted to fellowship. So they gave what they had together. Now, communal living means that everybody has one thing in common. Uh, it almost carries the idea of uh, communism. You follow the preacher right now? And it's very important. I don't want to take away from HD because he's got too much and give it to Marie. That's, that's not right. I, I'm for you gaining whatever God can bless you with. And then being benevolent with what you have. You follow me? Because as you move through the book of Acts, you'll realize that they had to help these people out because, well, they went too far into an extreme. But there are principles inside here that are so important. Uh, you know, I live at the ranch, you know that, out on the property. And that we've got David's family, Joseph's family. My sons live there. My daughter and son-in-law live there. Josiah Ramirez called me last night from Flagstaff. He's bringing his fiance down. Uh, Natalia coming down. And that's, they're going to get married and end up living there. You could almost call it communal. But let me just say that everybody there acts like this is my house, my place. You take care of your grass. I'll take care of my grass. You take care of your family. You pick up your toys. I'll pick up my toys. Everybody follow where I'm going? Yeah. So you have to be careful in it because sometimes that communal, that gathering, you know what it's like. Some of you live in a house all by yourself because you don't want nobody else in there messing with your stuff. Mm, I'm meddling. i got to stay in the Bible. Father, I ask you to help me. In Jesus' name. Everybody say it. Amen. Amen. Come on, be seated. i got to roll. Churches grow. Warmer through fellowship, deeper through discipleship, stronger through worship, broader through ministry, and larger through evangelism. Rand, I'm fixing to fly here, so pray, uh, hang on. If the church is to grow, we have to become warmer through fellowship. you got to be kind of, when I asked you to shake hands, some of you did, some of you were kind of reluctant because you got this idea that they may transmit something to you. I, I've got this crazy idea that if you're a gospel believer and a lover, I, I, I have done this before. When my kids were sick, I make them drink after me so they get well. I don't believe everything I read. I don't believe everything I I think life has to be by faith. That you got to live by faith. And so I, I, just, I just move that way. We, we get so scared so quick and we're worried about such diseases and problems like that. You got, you, in order to, to grow, we got to fellowship. We got to connect with one another. We got to hang out. And they continued in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. They visited together around the table. They broke bread. That means they ate together. They fellowshiped together. They visited together in the church. I've said this for years. What is your home worth and what is it good for if you never invite anybody into it? Uh, and, and to open your home up and to say, come on in, let's have fellowship. I don't know you unless we get to hang out with one another. And I'm not speaking just on behalf of me, for the people all around you. You got to start inviting folk into your place. Amen. You got to start opening it up. Say, come, come, come on in here. Amen. And fellowship with me. They visit. My dad was so good at that. My pop, people would come over all the time, just hang out at my house. And that, that passed on to me. All my friends, Randy, Bubba, David, Mike, hung out at my house. Because their homes were a little more sacred. You know what I'm saying? Let me just say this. All their parents went to church. And so their homes were all about what they could do. You know, you can't do certain things. At my house? <laughs> well, my mom and dad were a very forgiving couple. Very kind toward, toward all of them that came over. But you're talking about building a relationship and connecting with people. And you can't do that unless you fellowship. Unless you connect, unless you do so. They visit together at each other's homes. And hospitality, enjoying having people in your home. You're, you are not functional until you are relational. 
You are not functional until you are relational. And, and I'm just going to keep mentioning to you. And, and I'm not trying. I know some of you are pastor. I, I'm kind of. You, you know, there are people in this church that have given me the code to their homes to get into their house. Bro, you, you bless me. Because I might sell that code. No, I'm not going to do that. I just want to thank you for letting me have your code. That way I just felt free access. Access is so important. Access equals relationship. If I don't have access with you, I don't have relationship with you. Amen. So it's good to have access. If the church is to grow, it'll be through discipleship. It, it, for us to, to, disciples begot disciples. People watch you pray. They watch you give. They watch you fast. They watch you do things, uh, witness, uh, and, they, and they want to be like that. That's what disciples do. Both new believers and newcomers, they need to find purpose in life. Last week I read out of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power power may be of God and not of us. In the message you said, if you only look at us, you might well miss the brightness. We carry this precious message around and the unadorned clay pots, these earth suits, these these um, dirt bags, if you would, uh, of our ordinary lives. That's to prevent anyone from confusing God's incomparable power with us. People blossom, my friend, when they find their ministry, when they realize I can do this thing. I love what Kayla, can I talk about you just a minute? We were out shooting guns the other day, doing skeet shooting. And her dad was out there, and he had this nice gun. And, and, we, and, and sister, her, her first several shots were the worst shots I've ever seen in my life. I mean, she shot behind, she went above, she went below. And I'm not, I'm not a great shooter, but, but I could tell she was all messed up. She had this look. I'm exaggerating. I'm exaggerating, okay? But it, it was just... And then she would, oh, I can't do this. And her dad kept pushing her and kept pushing her. And this is what I see in our lives. Many times we want to quit too early. Well, then all of a sudden she hit. Once she hit, it was like, I can do this. I can pray. I can fast. I can give. I can witness. I can share my gifts with the world. Once she hit that first skeet, that first like that, it was like a smile came on her face. And all of a sudden, her, her, everything about her demeanor changed. She started getting up right. She started putting the gun forward. Everything started changing. Then, then the boys jumped in there, including my son. Oh, they're going to take her on. You can't let a girl beat you. She beat every one of them. The issue with that was me was watching this growth take place so quickly. And it doesn't always happen in our life. But once you get born again, once you start serving God, and I've watched some of you, bless your heart, you just keep messing up because you keep coming back. And if you keep coming back, you're going to be start becoming more like Jesus. You start coming, becoming more like Jesus, then you're going to be a threat to the devil. Can I get an amen? So people are going to blossom when they find that gift inside of them. They start using it. And I mentioned to her that the fact she did that means daddy had to go buy another gun. Uh-huh. A, di- a disciple is more than a believer. Again, you, you go from being a believer to disciples. Uh, it's this progress that you, that you move through in life. And so it's important that you get there. Like begots like. Musicians hang out with musicians. They, 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 they gather around one another. The same way with being a disciple of Christ. I, I ran with some bikers this week, and I didn't know if they knew Jesus or not. But it didn't take me long to p- figure it out. Because like begots with like, we connect. In Lordship, I remember the year, the first time I heard this was in Florence, Alabama. A man stood in the pulpit and he said, if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. And I was a young, committed believer and I thought, I'm so short when it comes to understanding Lordship. That if he's not Lord of all, everything in my life, then he's not Lord at all. And I, I need to make him Lord of all. Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, he said, if anyone come after me, he's got to deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. This fasted life, this praying life, this giving life is me having to give up who I am in order to follow him. It doesn't mean life is boring. You can tell my life ain't boring. Hammer with me sometimes. I'm telling you, my life's not boring. But on the flip side of life, I can tell you that many times we do not deny ourselves. We are not going to do it. If bluebells and... I'm just picking at your bluebell. But even last night, you know, I know what yesterday was. And they made a cake and I would made up my mind. I ain't eating none of that. That's one reason why I left. Hey, man, better be away from it than be near it. I got back, I had to blow a candle out and tell everybody else, y'all ain't up yourself, eat up, you know, but I, I don't, I don't want to eat that right there. So first you got to deny yourself. Made at the deepest level of one's will to say no to something. Just, just start with something. 
Just something. Just one thing. Just say no to it. I don't care if it's a soda, a TV program, or, or, or a video game, or whatever. Just say no to it and just see how far you start progressing in life. To make him the ruling passion of your life. Take up your cross daily. Our dedication to him. What Jesus was saying is, if you want to be my disciple, spiritually, you must die to yourself. I can't sugarcoat that. Sugarcoated. Christians make frosted flakes. Y'all know that, don't you? Amen. So, so it's important for you to realize, I can't sugarcoat it. You have to die to yourself. You've got to prefer His will over yours. You've got to give up what you want to do in life, allowing, me to, to, allowing Him to become your focus. Now listen, people ask me, Pastor, you like living here? I live here because God wanted me to live here. That's why I'm here. Not that I go to Pennsylvania. But I would live somewhere in North Alabama or Tennessee or somewhere up in there. You know, I'd be up around in mountains and stuff. If God gave me, uh, he said, you can do what you want. He didn't do that. He put me here and I fell in love with the people here. I'm not in love with the geography here. If you are, you have never been anywhere else. Amen. Ain't that right, Cajun? They ain't never been anywhere else. I mean... First time I rode into this place, I'm telling you, I come over the I-10 bridge. This is a true story. I came over the I-10 bridge in, the, in 1981, 82, and I saw all the lights lit up. And I said, man, look at Houston. That place is big. It wasn't even Houston. It was Exxon. <laughs> and then the smell and all that. But then God says, you know, this is where I want to put you. And if he puts you here, you don't despise it. You fall in love with it. And that's, what, that's what's happened. 2 Timothy 2.2 2 says this. Jesus said, follow me. At the heart is the thought of obedience. 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. And the things Paul speaking to Timothy. This is his last letter before his death. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses. And trust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. Watch how this thing works. It's pretty simple. The church grew from discipleship. Paul to Timothy. Timothy to faithful men to teach others. That's how this thing works. Whether you be men, and it's, it's, it's gender friendly here, so don't, don't get hung up on that. But, but Paul's saying, look, first you've got to teach somebody. You've got to reach somebody. Oh, Pastor, I want to reach the masses. You can't even reach one person. Reach one person. Help one person. I don't care if it's your children. I am constantly working on my kids. Even this morning, I sent a text to one of them. And I, I push a little bit, and I pull them back a little bit, but I'm constantly trying to help them understand, amen, this gospel thing. Because this thing is, is my life. This is what I, I, I believe in. I, I want them to catch it. Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your light so shine before men. They'll see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So your light is your acts, your actions, what you're doing. They see you loving God. They see you being kind. They see you being forgiveness. And when they see that light, then they begin to glorify God. Freedom, listen guys, freedom restricted becomes power. I'm free. I come out of hippie movement. I was right on the tail end. I graduated in 1979 with dingoes, bell bottoms, big collars, unbuttoned down to here, and my mama's Avon necklace. Because Derek, I couldn't afford another one, you know, I had to get what I could. Boy, we were hippies. We thought we were. That hippie movement had one thing freedom. Woodstock, freedom, all about being free. Do whatever I want to do because I'm free to do whatever. Listen to me, guys. Freedom restricted becomes power. I, I've had this uh, notion that several of you had that I could ride a horse. Mm -hmm. I, I tried it for years. I was hospitalized. People ask, why you ride a Harley? Because horses kept putting me in the hospital. Uh, yeah, I, but I, I worked them horses. Man, I, I do. But I found this one thing out. I could not make that horse do what I wanted to do unless I restricted their power. If I put that bridle in that bit and taught that horse and could pull back just a little bit and teach him left, right, guide, I could restrict his power. And when I did that, now that's real power. Because if it's out of control, freedom out of control, I can do whatever, I'm born again, I can do whatever I want. Grace is all over me. Uh -uh. The great tributaries of the United States, the Mississippi, the Tennessee, the Colorado, the Arkansas, all these great rivers that flow through here. When they are restricted down into dams, they create power. In our lives, when we say, okay, I have the freedom. I'm going to give you something that ain't on the overhead, but you need to write it down. Limit your liberty by your love. When you love somebody, you limit your liberty. Oh, I got the liberty to do what I want. 
I can smoke this, I can drink that, I can watch that. Let me tell you, you may have that kind of freedom, but if you love somebody, there's certain folk I will not do that around. I'm not going to do it. Amen. Because I love them too much. I enjoyed the flavor of alcohol in all of its proponents. Loved it. But I won't drink because if I do, then my, my love, if I drink around my kids, what am I going to do to them? They're going to want to drink. If I drank around you, some of you have, have quit drinking because alcohol hurts you. It affected you. It made you, mm, let me see, what's the Greek word? Stupid. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and when it made you that way, it was important for you to, to, to get away from it. Now, if you knew your pastor was drinking, then all of a sudden you'd have that kind of freedom. So you have to limit your liberty by your love. If I love you, I can't do that. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to hurt you with that. So it's important to, to reduce your freedom. Just pull it down. And now you're more powerful. You're ready to spring. If the church is to grow, it's going to grow stronger through worship. And we're going to talk about worship a little bit more. But we enter God's presence. When I walked in, I thought, oh, man, we got too many people in here for this to be so quiet. Why is it so quiet? It don't be no noise. We want to hear some words. And by the time we got to that last song, I could hear the choir singing behind me. Amen. I said, now that's what we need to hear. God needs to hear our worship. We enter his gates. Amen. We encounter God's presence. We experience his provision. Amen. It, it begins to change our lives when we worship. Worship is an outward expression of an inward love. Unless you love, you're never going to express. When you love, when you love somebody, you express yourself. Express yourself. And I told you last week, because of this issue of dirt bags in our life, you got to be very, very careful. Because when you're dating, when you're courting, all you show them is your gift, how wonderful you are. But after you get married, right, D? After you get married, <laughs> after you get married, then all of a sudden you get to see the dirt. Uh huh. You've got to be able to handle that as you move through life. Just want to throw that at you one more time. The church is growing. It's got to be brought up through ministry. We've got to keep growing our children's ministry, our youth ministries. We've got to grow the, uh, everything, the, the worship. everything got to keep on growing, amen, to reach and touch people. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach good news to the poor, sent to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. That's a whole sermon in itself. Recovery of sight to the blind, release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Sister Diane Spurlock, this is actually your verse when I see it. Amen. Because this is what I see you doing so much with the ladies. Hel helping those, uh, speaking in their life. As I would like to say, touch and tell. Jesus always did two things in life. He would touch or tell. His whole ministry was just in that. Sometimes he touched people. I've told you this. Broken hearted people don't need to be talked to. The reason I mentioned Sister Debbie to you is not so that you can, uh, when she comes in after the loss of her husband, Robert, is for you to pour into a whole bunch of words. They're not going to help her. What she needs is for you to put your arm around her and tell her you love her. Amen. Just be there with her. Amen. That's what you do for broken hearted. But Jesus taught us that. Now, keep moving. If the church is to grow, come on up here, my friend. If the church is to grow, it's because of evangelism. The question you all got to answer. This was the question I had to deal with in Bible college. Four years of college, you get a bachelor's degree, and this was the one question. How are you going to respond to the Great Commission? In other words, do you believe that people that don't know Jesus are going to hell? Do you believe that people that don't know Jesus are going to hell? Oh, thank you. I got an answer there. That's the right answer, by the way. You got it. You're correct. You have to. You have to understand it. You got to get this. If, if people were going to heaven without Jesus, why would Jesus come to earth and die for us? Why would he endure what he did for us? So there's this need, and I, am, I believe in the mercies of God. I believe that they knew every morning and somehow they reach and, and, and I, I, I just got to let God be God. But listen to the scripture. When the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshiped him. But some doubted. And then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. And teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded. As surely I'm with you always to the very end of the world. This, this issue is about relationship. Jesus wants relationship with you, Bubba. He wants relationship with you. He wants to have this connection with you. And, and many times we, we push it aside and we, we're scared of it. But he just wants you, man. 
He just wants to have you and him. That's why it's, it's not about, well, pastor, they don't know. If they knew about him, it would change their lives forever. It would, it would turn things around for them. He's not willing that any should perish. 2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises. Some understand slowness. He's patient with you. Not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And, and some people have made this about, well, you got to repent. Repent means to get back to the high place in your life. Repent, pent house. I don't want to flow up, throw up memories for some of you young people or older people in here. But the penthouse is the highest part of the building where you get to look out and see everything. When you repent, it means to get back to the highest place you once were. Do you want to stay down here groveling, just barely getting by, spiritually weak? Or would you like to repent and say, God, forgive me of my, 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 my dumbness, my, my, my choosings, and, and help me to turn this thing around? And all of a sudden, God takes you through that repentance and puts you back in the penthouse. And now you're overlooking and you've got, uh, got all the blessings of God in your life, all the favor of God in your life is coming back because you're repenting. Who wouldn't want that? Do you just want to be stubborn and say, no, I don't want to. I want to stay right here and act like this. <laughs> oh. I just wonder if sometimes if God would give us permission for a little laying on of hands ministry. Hmm. Hmm. I got I to gotta quit. Those who know Christ, if they don't know Jesus, are they lost? We have missionaries because we believe they're lost. We have evangelism because we have they're lost. We, we tell people to go and, and share the gospel with others because we believe they're lost. It's, it's more than about getting you to heaven. It's about getting heaven to you. It's about getting heaven to you. It's a song said, and we, he couldn't take us with him, so he brought heaven to earth. Stand with me if you would. I'm going to say the last slide, Miranda. I've said to you that worship is an outward expression of an inward love. And you've got to settle the issues of those that don't know Jesus lost. And once you settle that issue, now you understand the mandate of the little country church and should be all the other churches in this area is to reach people. It's not about us competing with other churches for growth or or stature, or look, I, I, I could care less. If you came here and gave your life to Jesus and ended up at Crosby Church, or the Brethren Church, or the Church of God in Christ, or, or the Baptist Church, I, I'm cool with all of that. I'm cool with all of that. Why should we compete? I, I don't, or if you got saved somewhere else, but you're getting fed here, what, what's the problem? But I'm going to say this to you again. When you find your pastor, you found your church. When you found the voice that speaks in your life, you found your church. It doesn't matter what the building looked like. Somebody that can speak into my life. If the church is to grow, we've got to do our part. Amen. We've got to make this year count. 2020. If I'd have only known. If you'd have only known. That the last time you shook that man's hand at the door. We don't get that. We just don't get that. We, and I'm not being mean. I'm, I'm the same way. We don't get it. That, that we don't get that opportunity. It's not always going to happen. So we have to make the best of every opportunity. God, I love your house. I love this house. I know how much you love your people. How you formed them. In their mother's wombs. And you brought them into this earth. And you put within them treasures and gifts. All the excitement. Of watching a gift open up to see it manifest and be used the talent of music the talent of preaching the talent uh, of uh, the ability to serve to create I marvel at the giftings of your people a oh God in Jesus name if there's somebody two three four somebody's in this house that don't know you Spirit of God, would you tug on them? Just tug on them right now. That this is their day. To repent, to turn toward you, to get back into the high place. God, I know you are the God that can take away the desires of drugs and alcohol. You can remove lust. You, you can take away envy. You can deal with the, the pride of the human heart. 
God, we just got to give you a chance. Mama can't make it happen. Daddy can't make it happen. You can do it. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, if you would realize that, that you are behind in the love for God, that your life is not measuring up, that this is a day to turn that around, would you lift your, lift your hand up right now? Let me pray for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Thank you, thank you. Amen. When I see hands of people I don't know, I know that God's saying something right now. He loves you. Oh, he loves you. Just hold those hands back up again. Let's pray this together. Everybody praying with those who are praying. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I commit myself to you today. Use me. Take the gifts you've given. Let me discover them. Let me find them. I will present them. I will see things happen. I'll see you move. I'm going to be a witness. I'm going to love you. Have relationship with you. All the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Give God a great big praise in here. Hallelujah. Come on. Give me praise. Give me praise. Come on. Hallelujah. I don't think now it's if the church is going to grow. I believe the church is going to grow. We're just seeing this thing happen. I so look forward to someday when it happens to pass a baton and see it keep growing. I don't ever want to believe this house grows just because of the personality behind the pulpit. But I do know who I am. I understand who I am. And whoever the next man is that steps up here to do this better have the same passion and desire. It has to happen for it to be successful. It has to. We'll see what God is going to do. I ain't leaving for a while. I already gave God a chance yesterday and he let me go. <laughs> he said it for a brief moment. I gave her a servant. Like, don't think because I ride a bike I'm giving God a chance. Just the fact that you enter in life. Life has its opportunities. Amen. Again, you don't have to turn that card in today. You can wait. Do it next week if you know what you're going to do. But we've got to have a budget on where we're going, how much of the floor we're going to do. Uh, I love this house. If you need an offering envelope, lift your hand. Amen. If you committed yourself to giving, stay at it. Watch what God's going to do. David, if you'd come on up. I didn't mean to preach so good this morning. <laughs> Would y'all forgive me for my vanity at times? Please do. Please do. I just, it just happens. Amen. Uh, let me just see if there's somebody. The only thing I want to mention is the 29th of this month. The 29th. Just throw this at you. Who would like to win a Henry rifle? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, that's right. I mean, I don't care how many guns you got. You still need one more. Right. So at our beast feast... I'm asking you to pre-cook your meat before you come. We'll warm it up there. Mike, you're going to have a pit going, right? We're going to have a pit going. We're going to cook some pork. and uh, we're gonna have, It's going to be simple, guys. It's pretty much pork and beans. We're going to have meat and beans. and I'm not asking for much because the whole issue is to get there. We're going to have uh, uh, washers and bean bag, uh, toss. We got archery set up. Uh, we've already built the archery stands for it. I'm talking about you bring your bow. Yeah. You bring your bolts. We'll have archery, shotgun. You bring your shotgun. We'll have skeet shoot. We've got all kinds of things set up for the men for a few hours. Pastor David Hilton will be preaching to our men. Amen. And, and giving them a good word. Uh, I'm, we're going to start promoting this right now, starting today. I want to see 150 men show up at our place. Amen. I'm, I'm talking about you plus one. You got to invite somebody. We're, gonna have, we're giving away all kind of stuff. But then this, this is an opportunity for men and teenagers. All right. This ain't for six-year-old junior. Don't make, I don't want to hurt your feelings here. But this is for men and teenagers. And uh, that's, that's uh, 13 and up. Okay. I think that's when you become a teenager. If I remember back in the day. So if you... Uh, and then we're going, to, we're going to see what's going to happen. We're going to have a great time. Amen. So just get ready to promote that. You'll see it on, on uh, social media. Just keep it going. 
and, and, and tag people's names in it, men's names in it, you want to see come to this. And then make sure you take time on the 29th to show up. Extra, extra cards for the, uh, for the Vision Sunday, for the flooring, um, will be in the back at the bookstore. So if, if you want an extra one or you need another one, uh, maybe you want to give one to a friend, that's cool too. Um, February 9th, Swap Seniors Group, that will be today after service. See uh, Linda and Ken Rich in the back. February 14th, TLCC, Crosby Kids Ministry. That is going to be on Valentine's Day. If you have kids... Is there an age limit on that? Like, I guess not. No? <laughs> They're all shaking their head. They're like, we're dropping ours off. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I, look, I look over to them because I know they're in my place. They're like, yeah, we got a lot of them. We're dropping them all off. <laughs> um, so if you guys, this is just a fundraiser for the kids to be able to go to the ark. Okay, so uh, drop them off. They're going to have a great time. I believe she said, uh, let's see. Yep, 5 to 11. So that gives you plenty of time to be able to go out, eat, watch a movie. Um, that, that's a great thing. February 15th, Off-Road Misfits Connection Group. Mike, you want to say something? Yeah, anybody want to see anybody? I'm going to go to another camp. Give us a key phone here if you have any questions or anything like that. Yeah, I'll see. I'll back over here. Anybody's going? Everybody's welcome to join. Where's your house? Where's the house? The Pickett House. The Pickett House. Pick it house in Woodville. I just saw, see, that food must be good because they get, I just got a bunch of people excited up here. I ain't been, but now you, see, maybe you can convince me here. <laughs> I got Sam and Ms. Marie up here. They just <laughs> sort of drooling. <laughs> I, I may be catching a ride with one of y'all. <laughs> February 16th, Lift Ladies Bible Study. Join the ladies of TLCC in a Bible study after see Miss Diane Phelan. Um, February 29th, this is what Pastor was talking about. This is going to be our beast feast. Again, if there's some kind of food that you like, quail and pig, snake, whatever, I mean, whatever, just bring it. And, uh, hey, I, I'm willing to try anything. I, I do not believe that there's anything in creation that is bad until I try it. And then I can tell you if it's bad or not. So I'm at least willing to try it once. Um, so bring it. And, again, it's going to be a day of fellowship for the men. And just going to be a good time. Uh, ladies, I know there's going to be opportunities to serve if you guys want to come out, help serve um, with the, the meals. And she's going to need help. Miss Judy is going to be there. So um, if you guys want to come out and help serve, that's also a blessing. Um, our, our spring conference is going to be March 1st through the 4th. Uh, it's going to be great. And, and again, our, our midweek, first week midweek will be during the conference. So we'll all be in here. Uh, I know Don Metcalf that he has come in is going to be fantastic he really speaks highly of them so i'm excited about it again we make this a success by the fact that we show up and and we people will preach according to how we want them to preach you want somebody to come in and preach encourage them and i promise you they'll preach better so uh, as we do that I, i'm excited about what's going to happen um this is real quick uh daddy daughter luau dance will be at march 21st um, and then April 5th, Muscle Car Sunday. Mark that on your calendars. Uh, that's one of our huge outreaches that we do every year, so that's going to be a good thing. Lord, we're grateful for today. We're believing God for jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission. Checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises. Finding money. Bills paid off. Settlements. Inheritance. Rebates and returns. Debts demolished, royalties received, favor, success to the kingdom. I've heard a thousand stories home.